Hey everybody, in this video, I want to talk to you about how we can look up data in a two-way table. Um, so what I did here is I just recreated the table that is in your book um, that has social media shares in it. And I just added an extra worksheet on the bottom here. Um, and I added in a few different months, right? January through April. And I looked at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and I typed in this data. So this would be the data for our, um, our table here. And what I want to do is just kind of play around a little bit with the different lookup features that we can use. I'm going to use XLOOKUP here um, and show you how we can grab information in a two-way table. So I'm going to focus on Instagram in March. So maybe I'd like to know the number of, um, I guess, site visits or social media shares here for Instagram in March. Now, again, I can look in the table and I can see it's going to be this 824 right here. Right, so it's pretty obvious. Um, again, pretty small table that we can just kind of look this up on our own. Um, but if we had a very large table or we want to do this a lot of times, then this would be a little bit tedious. So it's nice to have a way to look up these features. Let's move this tab down a little bit. There we go. Um, so what I want to show you here first is the X lookup function and how we can use it in a two-way table instead. Um, and I think this is probably the easiest the easier way to do it. I know there's other functions I'm going to show you too, um, but again, the X lookup one is a little bit more of a current way to do it um, as well here. So what you can see here, and I already have the formula typed in, is that we have a nested X lookup function. So I'm using X lookup twice uh, in once, basically. So I start with my regular X lookup function first, and you just want to focus on one direction at a time. So the first time I did this, I focused on the row information. So my first value B10 is March, right? So I designated that I'd like to know the information from March. So I type in that cell and then I highlight where the word March would occur, right? So March would occur somewhere between B3 and E3. Then I put a comma. Now, normally this would sort of be almost the end of it, right? We'd start thinking about um, the outputs or what kind of match we're going to do and things like that. But at this point now, I'm going to put in a second X lookup function. I'm nesting it. And this will allow me to put in column information as well. So I'm doing row information and then column information. So I put in another lookup function. The column data I'm looking for here is Instagram, which is in cell B9. The word Instagram would be found either in cell A4 through A6. So you see that next. And then finally, I type in what my output is going to be here. Um, so where would I find my output information? It would be somewhere in the body of this table, right? Somewhere from B4 down to E6. So that is the last piece. So for XLOOKUP, the first two parts are really trying to find what value is you want. So the cell that has the information I'm looking for, right? So the word Instagram or March, in this case, it's March. Um, and then where I would find March in the table. And then I do it again with the column information. So now I'm looking for Instagram, where I would find Instagram, and then finally the output data. Um, here, if you don't type anything else in, it will default automatically to an exact match. So you can avoid putting in, you know, the zero, the negative one and all that sort of stuff. Um, it will default automatically. Uh, but you still have those other features where if you need to put in other pieces for the X lookup function, you absolutely can here. Or if you want it to return a value if not found, et cetera. Um, and then I should get that 824. So again, I use my X lookup feature. Again, I'm gonna start with the row information here. So just keep it organized. I'm gonna start with the row. So I'm looking for March, type in the comma. I highlight, well, where would those headings be? They'd be here between uh, B3 and E3, comma. Now, instead of going right to the output, I'm going to put in the column information. So I do another X lookup. I'm nesting it inside. Now I'm doing my column information. So I'm looking for Instagram. Well, I would find that from here to here. And now I'm looking at the output data. So the data that I'm trying to get is something in between here. Just make sure you have enough parentheses on everything um, and I can hit enter. And again, if I have an exact match, I don't have to put the zero in, it defaults to it automatically. Um, but if you wanted something that wasn't an exact match, then you could use the other match features there. Um, so again, that's the, the way that I think is easiest to do it. 
The another way that you can do it is using the index function. Um, so with the index function here, you select the table. So notice I selected the entire table, um, A3 to E6. And then what you do is you tell Excel the row and the column number that you're looking at in the table. Um, so here again, I'm using the index function. I'm selecting the table that I'm looking at. And then I tell it the row number first. So in this table, right, I'm looking for Instagram. So that's row one, two, three. And I'm looking for what happens in March. So that's one, two, three, four for the column. And then I hit enter. So instead of using Excel to kind of find like the words that you're looking for or the specific information, you have to tell it the exact row and column that you want. And then it will spit it back out. So that is using an index function. Um, we also have a match function. So here, what the match function does is kind of the opposite of your index function. Instead of you telling it which row or column that the information is in, it will tell you instead the row or column that the information is in. So here I just said Instagram. So I did match. I typed the word in quotes, Instagram. That's the one I was looking for. And Instagram is found um, between A3 and A6, for instance. And then I did, I did zero here for, you know, your exact match as well. Um, and it spit out three because it occurs in the third row there. Um, so again, if I'm looking for, let's say, Instagram, I look up array. Again, I can select. I want an exact match. I hit enter. Now notice here it told me two because this time I only selected the array from A4 through A6. So it is dependent on what you select for your, your row there or um, your information. Now the last piece I wanna show you is how to combine index and match functions to do the same thing we did with XLOOKUP. So again, I think XLOOKUP is the easier way to try to do it like a true lookup match function in a two-way table. Um, or a true lookup function in a two-way table, but you can nest and combine the index and match functions as well. So that's the last thing I have here. And again, this is probably a little bit more of a, uh, a technique that's been around for a while. The X lookup function is a little bit of a newer function, uh, but it, again, it's good to know both. So it's gonna depend on uh, what you find to be easier probably, um, and also who you're working with. So if you're working with a team that's constantly using you know, one or the other, then you, you will naturally probably start to gravitate that way. Um, so it's good to see them both. Um, again, for me, I tend to like XLOOKUP. Um, I think you'll find that some places are going to be using it more now. Um, but again, it really depends on each person. So in the last case here, again, noticing we're still getting that A24 value. So I start with the index. Um, and I start with B4 to E6. So I'm highlighting my data in that table, right? So this is the output data, B4 through E6. And then I'm gonna put a match in for the column and a match in for the row. So I do match uh, Instagram, like I kind of did before, right? And I selected A4 through A6 uh, as where I would find that. And then I did zero because I want an exact match. Then I would do a comma and I do match again. This time I'm looking for March and that would occur between cells B3 and E3. And again, I type in zero for an exact match. So again, it's a way to combine the index and the match functions together. So one more time, if I click the index function, I start by selecting the array. So like, where would I want my, where's my output data coming from? And then I'm gonna go ahead and nest, oops, nest in that match function. So I'm starting here with Instagram. And Instagram would be found somewhere over here. And I'm going to use zero because I want an exact match. I'm going to put parentheses to close that part. I'm going to do comma, a second match function. Here, I'm looking for March, uh, M-A-R. And again, it would be found somewhere from here to here. And I'm looking at zero there. I'm going to close that parenthesis. And then just be careful, you do have one more outer parenthesis there from the original index function. Um, oh, and look at, I made a lot of mistakes. See, I make mistakes too. Let's see what I did wrong. All right, B4 through E6. Um, it probably helps if I spell Instagram, right? There we go. 
So again, I make mistakes too. So I don't like to cut them under the videos with you guys. I figured you might as well see the real world, right? We all do it. Um, and there I spelled the word Instagram wrong. I wanted an exact match, which is why it wasn't coming up. Um, so just be a little careful. If you find out you're making mistakes like this, then go back, read carefully. Um, I type things in incorrectly uh, or spell things wrong. Um, common mistakes I make is I forget parentheses sometimes. So again, watch for those closing parentheses, particularly with nested functions. You need to have the right number or it won't work right. Um, so watch out for that too. And of course, which cells you select. Um, I done, do that all the time. I select the wrong cells or I go too far or, you know, again, I'm not paying enough attention. So if it doesn't come out the first time, then just pause for a second, read back through, make sure you haven't made a silly mistake, right? Maybe you forgot a comma or maybe you spelled something wrong or maybe you forgot parentheses or you highlighted the wrong cells, right? Maybe I highlighted from A4 to A7 by accident. So it doesn't make sense. Um, it's probably just a small mistake. Um, and then if you still can't figure out a mistake, then maybe go and get some extra help. Um, but usually a lot of times it's probably just a small mistake um, that you need to go in and fix. It also helps too, if you can't find your mistake, to sometimes just start over because you may have a typo that you're just not seeing. Um, so if it's still not working and you can't find anything, then it doesn't hurt to kind of clear it out and try it again. Because um, like I said, you may have a small error that you're just not catching. Um, and that's a good tip as well.